So you've probably already seen the breaking news from today, and it's nice to be able to react to this in real time because now we can have a conversation about it. And that is that J.J. Watt has requested uh, his release from the Houston Texans, and the Houston Texans have agreed to part ways with J.J. Watt making him a free agent heading into the 2021 season. 32-year-old defensive player, uh, one of the more perennial players that we have seen this decade, uh, is a free agent on the market, and I think... Yeah, maybe I, maybe I'm alone here. I, I need to gauge, I need to gauge the reaction with Vikings fans what they what they think of this news. Is JJ Watt somebody that we could bring in as a free agent to help solve the defensive line problems that we currently face, not including Daniel Hunter? And so here's the conversation, right? Um, the Vikings don't have a lot of money to spend in free agency. We only have uh, one first round pick this year. We don't currently have a second round pick. We don't have one currently. And we have a lot of needs and holes to address in the trenches if we're going to be considering any sort of Super Bowl run in the near future. Uh, we are just not formidable up front on either side of the ball. And I, I know he's past his prime. I know he has a history of, you know, significant injuries. But uh, at 32 years old, I still think that J.J. Watt can be a definite contributor to a Mike Zimmer defense. I really do. And this is the kind of move that you make if your goal is to win a Super Bowl. Like, you find veterans uh, that you can get to fill gaps that otherwise you would be building through the draft. Is he going to come at probably a pretty hefty price tag? Yeah, I think the bidding war for him could be significant. He was due $17.5 million this year on his final year with the Houston, Texas contract. It was easy for them to get out of it and release him because they incur no dead money. It was, uh, you know, zero hit against the cap uh, to release him because it's the final year of his contract. And, uh, you know, Minnesota makes sense from a perspective that he will have a huge opportunity whether it's as the defensive end opposite of Geno Hunter, or we could even move him inside and get Shamar Steven, um, you know, out of the out of the starting role, which I think would be a huge upgrade. Um, so it just depends on where you think that he is viable on the defensive line in terms of what his skill set brings to the table, or you know, are we just are, are we even in the realm of possibility in terms of being able to afford? Uh, said player at, at the contract that he would probably demand. Um, those are all questions that have to be answered. But I think if I'm a Vikings fan, I want to at least entertain the possibility of bringing J.J. Watt into Minnesota because you know what this would do, would it would free up uh, your first round draft pick. It would make that choice a lot easier. J.J. Watt solidifies the defensive line. Um, Michael Pierce comes back. We still have Daniel Hunter, assuming we keep him. Well, you know, these are a lot of assumptions, but, you know, this is the early stages of the offseason. So we can pretty much say and speculate however we want, right? So you have J.J. Watt, you have Michael Pierce, you have Daniel Hunter. That's a pretty decent, really, you know, I think in my opinion, much improved defensive line of, as opposed to what we had uh, starting last year, even with, you, you know, Yannick Nagakwe in the conversation. Now your first round pick is freed up to address the other side of the ball. And you could go after an Elijah Barrett Tucker uh, or Rashawn Slater. Um, I, I can't believe how far down, you know, draft boards Wyatt Davis has fallen after his season. But, you know, that gives you an opportunity. Maybe you trade back, acquire a second round pick, get Wyatt Davis later in the first round. Um, all kinds of options that op suddenly open up to be explored for the offensive line in the first round of the 2021 draft, where there exists a lot of really good talent. This is a pretty deep offensive tackle dra uh, draft class. You know, you could even get a Jalen Mayfield later in the first round. Um, you could even get, um, oh gosh, there was a one guy that I've been watching and I suddenly forget his name. <laughs> so, and that just tells you how, how many players that you could consider. So um, that's basically where I would be at. I would definitely entertain this idea and I would want uh, Rick Spielman and the Minnesota Vikings to bring in J.J. Watt if we can afford it. Um, and, you know, I think it's something that's doable because there's a lot of roster moves that we have yet to make regarding veteran talent that is probably, um, you know, uh, not going to be on this roster next year, you know, like a Kyle Rudolph and Anthony Harris is a free agent, so he's not coming back. Um, and there's a bunch of guys that can be restructured like Harrison Smith. I think Kirk Cousins absolutely has to be restructured because the cap hit that we are going to incur uh, after the March, I believe it's the March 7th. The third day of the new league year is just going to be insane. It's going to be top six quarterback money. So that's just not how you build a roster if you plan to win a Super Bowl or at least compete for one right now. 
So um, this is a move that I think we should make. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this development and is this an idea that you would entertain or are you set on just finding a defensive player uh, to rehabilitate the defensive line in the first round of the draft? Do you have your eye on Quiddy Pay or a Gregory Rousseau or a Christian Barmore, somebody to that effect? So let me know what you think. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.